Now, from the news team that's covering the Carolinas, this is Channel 9 Eyewitness News Saturday morning. Breaking overnight in East Charlotte, a five hour standoff came to an end after police say this man held a woman hostage inside an apartment. The steps they took to end the standoff peacefully. A North Carolina lawmaker is calling out a teacher protest next week, why he calls the whole thing hypocrisy. But first, we start with the very hot weekend in Charlotte. This is a look at current temperatures this morning. They will climb to 90 today, the major concern when you step out the door. Good morning, I'm Elsa Gillis. And I'm meteorologist Vicki Graff. We are starting in the Weather Center because this is the big story, this heat. It's here. Yes, we made it to 90 degrees <laughs> yesterday. Today is going to be a little bit warmer and we could get close to some record heat this weekend. When you step outside, you already notice it's a warm start. We just updated to 62 degrees. That's slightly cooler than this past half hour when we were at 64. Still warm. 68 in Rockingham, though. 62 in Hickory and 65 just now in Jefferson. A warm start. If you're heading out for a walk, I would recommend the light layers. And if you're heading to any of the area events around town today, there's a lot going on. Make sure you're dressed for that heat by 10 o'clock upper 70s. If you are heading to spring into arts in Concord, we'll reach 90 degrees by four o'clock. I'll show you when we'll see relief from the heat coming up. Back to our breaking news in East Charlotte. Police took this man into custody after a five hour standoff with officers. Around 615 last night, police responded to an apartment on Coronado Drive for a domestic violence call. The caller said a woman's husband was holding a knife to her throat. When police got there, they say Mark Dre said he would kill the woman if officers entered the apartment. At one point, he came outside with a gun and asked officers to shoot him. Officers then called for SWAT, who tried to de-escalate the situation, but instead they say Drace threatened to kill the woman. Around 11, SWAT broke through the apartment door and arrested him. We spoke with neighbors who watched this all unfold. It's kind of frustrating being I'm new in the area, and this is where I chose to move to, thinking it was a safe and secure spot. It's actually pretty crazy because this is a pretty good neighborhood. The woman is at the hospital with minor injuries this morning. Drace is charged with assault by pointing a gun and first degree kidnapping, among other charges. Channel 9 dug through Drace's background and found he was arrested just last month for assault on a female. He was also arrested in 2015 for violating a domestic violence protective order. It's not clear if those past arrests involve the woman from last night's incident. Channel 9 is pushing police for more answers in this case. As soon as we get any updates, we'll let you know on air and on WSOCTV.com. In just four days, teachers across North Carolina will protest in Raleigh for higher pay and more funding. And dozens of districts are shutting down because of it. A local lawmaker is blaming, quote, teacher union thugs for the inconvenience. Anchor Erica Bryant spoke to him about why he thinks the protest is hypocrisy. North Carolina Representative Mark Brody says he chose his words carefully when he wrote this post on Facebook about Union County teachers who plan to protest in Raleigh for better pay. He says anyone who's upset is reading something into it that's not there. It's very clear. I support the message, but I do not support the method. Brody says it's fine if teachers want to protest, but it's the wrong time in the middle of the school week. An inconvenience to parents and not helpful to students because it means one less day of instruction in school. The message sparked controversy, especially a line where Brody refers to teacher union thugs. The leaders are the ones that I refer to as teacher union thugs. They're the ones who are pushing the agenda and those are the ones that are pressing the buttons and saying, this is what we demand. He says that line is only about those at the top, not the rank and file. The post was shared nearly 300 times and sparked more than 400 reactions. One person wrote, vote him out. But another wrote, why should they get paid for a protest? Brody argues that the real surplus to pay educators is being wasted on administrative staff at local school district offices and at the State Department of Education. But a lot of these are top heavy, unnecessary positions that could be used to help support teachers. So you would vote for teachers to get a raise? Of course. Erica Bryant, Channel 9 Eyewitness News. At least 34 school districts across North Carolina cancel classes on May 16th. This is a list of the local school districts that will be closed. Some will have optional teacher work days. CMS alone expects 2,000 of its teachers to participate in the protest. 
With the rally just four days away, organizers are solidifying their plans. They plan to start at the North Carolina Association of Educators headquarters at 10 a.m. Wednesday. They'll then march through downtown Raleigh and end at the legislature. As many as 15,000 people are expected. That's a very big number. And, you know, how are we going to accommodate all of this? We already have traffic and issues with parking. Channel 9 will have a team in Raleigh on Wednesday to cover that protest. I'll be there along with anchor Scott Wickersham. We'll bring you live coverage throughout the day here on Channel 9. This protest has been a hot button issue. Let us know what you think. Comment on this story on our WSOC TV Facebook page. 705 now new this morning. Two members of a controversial church are facing fraud charges this morning. Prosecutors say Dr. Jerry Gross and his son Jason Gross were members of Word of Faith Fellowship. They say the two were part of an employment benefit scheme to keep money flowing into the church despite a struggling economy. We've told you for months, former members claim they were physically and mentally abused. I-77 is back open this morning after a truck fire turned the highway into a parking lot nearly all day Friday. Officials say a truck collided with a concrete barrier on I-77 northbound near Sunset Road. Its diesel fuel tank was taken off, which caused the truck to burst into flames. The crash caused drivers to sit still for hours on the highway. Happening today, some Charlotte residents plan to protest a city council member after a controversial Facebook post. In April, Councilwoman Lawana Mayfield shared a link to an article on Facebook. It promotes a conspiracy theory that 9-11 was a controlled demolition. Mayfield released a statement after the backlash, saying in part she was in no way invalidating the impacts felt by many from 9-11, but she told us she questions a lot of other things as well. The post led to an online petition calling for her resignation. This morning, deplorable pride will hold a protest against Mayfield. The group says it's time Mayor Vilyles takes responsibility for Mayfield and another councilwoman's comments. The protest begins at 11 a.m. at the corner of Trade and Tryon Streets in Uptown. Within the last two and a half hours, authorities in Rowan County say they found a 14-year-old boy who disappeared yesterday. They haven't said where they found Daniel Morton or if he was hurt. We have new developments on the deadly Southwest Airlines flight. In an exclusive 2020 interview, the captain of flight 1380 spoke about the terrifying incident when the plane's engine exploded in midair. Captain Tammy Jo Schultz said she needed to use hand signals to communicate with her first officer in the cockpit because the explosion was so loud. Her husband is also a Southwest pilot, and the day this happened, she'd actually switched schedules with him. I helped coach my son's throwing event, uh, and so he had a track meet that I really wanted to go to. So Dean, being the amazing husband he is, said, you go to the track meet, I'll switch and take your trip. And so that's why I was on the trip. Jennifer Reardon died after she was sucked out of the plane window during the blast. New this morning, one woman is explaining the quick steps she and a teen girl took to try and save her. She got her hands right in there with mine and she tried to pull Jennifer in as well. I'm a very brave girl. I put my hand on Jennifer's back so she would at least know that we were there. Another passenger rushed in to help as well, but sadly he wasn't a match for the enormous pressure. I went to the window and uh, tried to uh, uh, just tried to pull her in. The passengers say they're recounting what happened because they want Reardon's family to know she didn't suffer. This morning, CMPD is looking for a dark colored Toyota truck. They believe it was involved in a heinous crime where a woman was attacked and left on the side of the road. The woman told police she met two men at a restaurant in East Charlotte who offered her a ride home. She says they took her to the old Eastland Mall site and tried to sexually assault her. She escaped, but not before they also hit her with a car. A good Samaritan found her on Central Avenue and got her help. Congresswoman Alma Adams is speaking out on newly released ads Russian officials created for Facebook to influence the presidential election. Her statement reads in part, more than 3,000 Russian linked ads that targeted 11.4 million Americans, including some in North Carolina, confirms the need for special counsel Mueller's investigation. Officials say the ads targeted communities that experience high-profile police shootings and counter-protests. 
Police say two armed men forced their way into a South Charlotte home and robbed those inside. It happened along Longleaf Drive around 745 last night. Police say one suspect had a gun and fired shots into the floor. The other had a pipe and hit one of the victims with it. That person was taken to the hospital but is expected to be okay. No arrests have been made. 709 now law enforcement in three counties are trying to figure out if a string of restaurant break ins are connected. Police have responded to similar cases in Burke, Lincoln and McDowell counties this week. Officers say in all of the cases, the suspects use a large rock to smash their way inside. In several of the break ins, they spent less than two minutes inside the restaurants. It was the registers they were after. Seems like they knew where the registers and that were because they were so fast. Investigators are stepping up patrols around restaurants across the area until these suspects are caught. New this morning, singer R. Kelly performed in Greensboro despite protests last night. He's accused of sexually abusing women. Last night, the music barely played before R. Kelly used an expletive to describe his week. He then summoned fans at Greensboro Coliseum to cheer in his support. Kelly has denied abusing anyone and doesn't face any criminal charges. Happening today, the second day of the Panthers minicamp will get underway. Five draft picks will return to Bank of America Stadium this morning. That includes wide receiver DJ Moore, cornerback Dante Jackson, and safety Rashawn Galdin. This is video from yesterday's practices. And after today, the rookies get a week and a half off before the Panthers hold voluntary organized team activities. It will be hot out there. It is 7-11 now. A live look through our Charlotte cam at Bank of America Stadium. Vicki Graff is tracking the hot day ahead. And to think we're only in May. Well, it is a nice and dry start to the day. You don't have to worry about downpours early on, and there's only a small chance for a few storms developing this afternoon. I'm more concerned about the heat. Temperatures will climb quickly. We'll make it into the low 90s yet again. And air quality, that is going to be an issue for some with respiratory issues for today. We have a lot of stagnant air, a light wind, and not much as far as rain. So that could be an issue through the afternoon, maybe even tomorrow as well. The UV index very high for today. You'll need that sunscreen. I'll be looking at when we'll see our next better chance for rain coming up. A high risk warrant ended in a deadly shooting. New at 745, the move troopers made that sent this building up in flames, and the reason they killed the suspect. Hey, that officer is off the job this morning after video of an arrest went viral. At 730, the reason they pulled the woman over in the first place. The SBI is investigating after an officer put a man in a chokehold. New and next, the reason the mayor is defending the officer and what the man admitted to doing wrong.